Hallelujah. So we are going to look at the basic values required for great divine missions. The basic values requires for great divine missions. Hallelujah. The go- a government can send you somewhere. That one is nothing to heaven. When get heaven back, you say, now we are sending you. This is what we are talking about. Amen? The, basic, the two basic, okay, we are going to look at primary values and secondary, secondary values. Okay? Just there. We are going to just stop there. We are not going far. Amen? Two basic values the father looks at to pick up his generals for great mission. Amen? Too basic. So I group with the primary values and what's the secondary value? The primary values are loyalty and integrity to our earthly authority. Amen? You'll be shocked. And you may think that, oh, I'll tell you, God will pick you in the house of your father or your mother before even you are born again. Amen? When I look at the life of Joseph, how old Joseph was when his, God picked him? 17. It's at the age of 17 that Joseph had a dream. Oh, let me read it for you. Genesis 37, verse 1 to, 7, uh, to 3. He said, jo- Joseph uh, Jacob settled again in the land of Canaan, where his father had lived as a foreigner. This is the account of Joseph and his family. When Joseph was 17 years old, he often tended his father's folk. Amen? He worked for his Half brothers, the son of his father's wife, Bila and Zilap, Zilpa. But Joseph reported to his father some of the bad things his brother was doing. Jacob loved Joseph more than any of his other children because Joseph had been born to his to him what? Yeah, to him in his old age. So, one day Jacob had a special gift made made for Joseph, a beautiful robe. It's true what the Bible says, but me, I don't agree with everything that is said there. That when he says, Jacob loved Joseph because Joseph was born to him on his old days. I disagree completely because at the age of 17, Benjamin was born. Hallelujah. Benjamin was born. Why Joseph, Jacob loved Joseph is because of Joseph have the mentality of a son. A son look after the interest of the father. And is there. When the, you, you, he sent out to do things for his father, uh, the brothers are misbehaving. Joseph, as he had the interest of the father at heart, he will come and report to the father. That's why Joseph, Jacob loved him. It's not because of the age. If not, Benjamin should be the one loved most. Amen? And you can see that he had that, this thing, that mentality. If you remember, at the age of 17, this way now he has a dream. God pick him amongst everyone. If you, me, who is God, no better than your father, can give you better than your father. But still, the little your father has given you, you put it, you have it, you have that interest at your heart like that. Let me give you greater one so you can do it for me. Amen? If you remember Jesus at the age of 12, when he was in the temple, what he told, what his mother and father was looking for, for him, what did he say? I'm, don't you know that I will look up, I should look after the affairs of my father? I forgot that. Let's, let's leave, leave that apart. Let's move now to David. What old, how old David was when he was 
looking after the sheep of his father, the folk of his father. It's not behind that the way he was faithful to the affairs of his father that God picked him up and told uh, Samuel, I have found a man after my own heart, a rejected soul. At that age, did David know anything about the word of God? No. So most of the time, somebody may think, oh, it's because now I'm a Christian, I can speak in tongue, I can pray, I can fast. It's no, 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 no. So your authority, the every authority God has given you, how do you value the interest of his heart? That's the first thing God look at, to pick at. Hallelujah. So, that's why in, uh, what do you, uh, okay, let me read it to you. The, uh, David own, it was 1 Samuel 16, verse 1. Now the Lord said to Samuel, ah, you have more long enough for soul. I have rejected him as king for, of Israel. So fill your flask with olive oil and go to what? Be Bethlehem. Find a man named Jesse who lives there. I have selected one of his sons to be my king. How old is yours? Amen. What did he know about kingship? He knew nothing. So for God to train him in kingship, God gave him a special ability. How to play. Amen. As he was, he can make good music. So Saul said, oh, bring him to my house. So when he was in the house, as he knew nothing about kingship, God made him now to become a, a, a best friend of Jonathan, who is the son of the king. So when you are the best friend of the son of the king, so the son of the king can teach you now what is it about kingship. Because all this thing, God is preparing you to become a king. So you have been selected based on how you take the interest of the things belonging to your earthly authority. Amen? Both Jesse, the father of David, and Jacob, the father of Joseph, were genetic father. They were as well spiritual fathers of these two boys. Amen? So, God look at how we assist our genetic and spiritual fathers. Hallelujah. God look at them. So you can be in the church for 10 years, 5 years, how many years? Some people will come. God will pick them. Start doing some amazing thing with them. And you, you are still there. So you need to understand the vision. How do you take it at heart? How do you want to assist? How do you want to pray? Look, he says Samuel. For Samuel to be picked, he was not the son of Eli. We know that, isn't it? Samuel was not the son of Eli. But the way they serve God, assisting Eli, better than the sons of Eli, God rejected the son of Eli and picked Samuel. Hallelujah. God has to pick you and train you it's also, if you, start, you see somebody start manifesting some anointing, don't think it's because he has been a no. It's a process. As, if, as far as I know, everyone has been called. If God wants everyone to go to the kingdom, everyone to be king, but the little he has given you, how do you value it? Amen. So, if you mark yourself, would you say you have a star in the criticism of your father's or your authority's decision? Or you, you have a star in intercessions for him? Because most of the time what happens is that we are with our authority, earthly authorities. God will say something for them. You may not understand. You may even think that, oh, it's wrong. What do you do? You pray. What do you do? You come. The way you come, but you say, no, me are, the way you behave, God is looking at it. Amen? Just get something there. He say, 
The field is big. The our workers are few. Though he said that up to now, he's not making everybody workers. Why? Because we are disqualified. God doesn't do, God does everything perfectly. So until you pick the values that God requires, forget it. Hallelujah. So we need to understand. Where blessings come from. So God sees the loyalty and integrity. Children develop to what their father requires. So until you have the mentality of the son, God will not pick you. Hallelujah. Jesus had that mentality. Amen? Jesus had that mentality. You fear your father, your authority. How do you fear? It's not that you are scared about him. But you take what he wants at heart. Oh, I'm going too far. We have been created in the image of God. When we have many sons or many children at home, and some always want to help us, want to assist us, want to do things for us, which one we love the most? But we are neglecting those things. And some people with pride. So, me, is God at trust. It's God. <laughs> and but you just saw God for 10 years and nothing is happening. Before you become disciple of God, you have to be a disciple of a man. Hallelujah. So, if we change our values, we change the way we do things. You see how God will pick you up. Amen? So God see the mentality. When you have the mentality of the son, God said, no, you deserve better. Let me now pick you and equip you myself so you can run my affairs for me. This way sometimes we see son become greater than father. Hallelujah? Son become greater than father. Moses could have not speak very well. Joshua was more capable than Moses. But the way Joshua was assist Moses, Joshua did not even knew that God had picked him long time. But God did not pick him because he demonstrated his love to God. But he demonstrated his love and loyalty to his father. Amen? So now we are going to look at the secondary values, which are faithfulness and love. Because when God picks you, he's now going to feed you with faithfulness and love. But when I talk of faithfulness, you need to understand what is faith. Hallelujah. Love and faithfulness are the two values of God that God teaches everyone. More, the more you grow in them, the more God uses you. So, when God picks you, he starts teaching you. Amen? And pro by producing in your heart things that can please him. That one in Ephesians, Philippians 2, 13, he said what? God is working in you, giving you the desire to, and the power to do what pleases him. Not the desire and the power to do what pleases you. Hallelujah. I'm rejoicing because we are going to understand love this morning. And we are going to understand faith. We have some faith, false love we always talk about. And even faith, people are thinking strong desire is faith. Strong desire is not faith. When you desire something strongly, say, yeah, I'm faith. I have faith, I have faith. No, you desire it too much. It's not that you have faith. Faith is so seeing things the way God sees it. Say, my righteous will live by faith. My righteous will put their strong desire in what I told them, what I showed them. 
God didn't tell you anything. You have, you focus your, your desire, your, all your hope there. What happens? You pass away, it will never come to pass because it's not the will of God. It's not what? The will of God. So faith is seen as God does things and wants things, then stick with it. You see how God does things, wants things, and you stick to it. That's faith. When he told Habakkuk, write the vision down. The vision came from where? From God. Hallelujah. Sometimes we plant things. We say we have faith. No, it's not faith. Sorry, maybe you have been taught something before. We are in the higher class now. Amen? That's not faith. Amen? I believe Jonathan had faith that he's going to be king, isn't it? Amen? Was he king? Hallelujah. Amen? But now there is some false love. When we are loved, we are enjoying somebody, we say we love him. <laughs> love is selfish. It's selfless, sorry. Love is what? Selfless. You take ice cream. Say, I love this ice cream. It's too good. I love no, you don't love him. You are enjoying him. Amen? So God is start teaching you love. Sowing love in you. When he starts sowing love in you, then you know that, yes, you love as God. What is good in us? Tell me, what is good in us? In human being, what is good in human being? But we say God loves human being. All the sin, all the misbehavior. Amen? He's not enjoying us. Hallelujah. But we, our love, when we are enjoying somebody or we are enjoying something, we say we love it. No, you don't love it. You are enjoying it. Let's get it clear this morning. Hallelujah. Some people say, you are enjoying God, the grace of God, and you say you love God. No. Let things be. T- Look at Paul. Look at the ministry of Paul. You can say, yes, he loves God. Look at the ministry of Jesus, even Moses. You see, the way God will test you. Hallelujah. So the more we grow in love, the more we carry the cross. The cross is that you love God and you love human beings. Amen? And when you love God, you don't enjoy God. Amen? You don't enjoy God. I am telling you something. I am telling you something. Anybody you see manifesting some amazing grace, they don't enjoy God, eh? When you see them, the way they are ministering, when they are ministering and things are happening in people's life, they are not happy because things are happening to their life, but they are happy because things are happening for people. God is doing people for, things for people. So it's totally selfless. Okay? But now when they go to God, praying eight hours, no stop. Twelve hours, no stop. Fifteen hours, no stop. Sometimes twenty-four hours, no stop. That's enjoying God. Try it, you see what is it? Just try it. Some people will speak uh, fast, days, dry, no food, only some water. I'm telling you, try, try, try. That is love. Love is what? Selfless. Amen? So the more we love God, the more we submit to Him and change our ways into His. The more we get close to God, the more we discover how much He values human beings and we do the same. Hallelujah? But now when you have the mentality of the Father 
And you know that God is the one who has created every human being. And this is the way he wants human being. But when you see human being, human being is opposite to what God wants. What do you want? What do you do? You start fasting, praying for that person, fighting for that person, for that person to become the way your father wants. That is love. Not somebody who come and say 20 pounds, take 200 pounds, take this, or come and hug you. That one you are enjoying the person. Your love is proved in the person who gives you her time. Hallelujah. And you say, no, he's my brother. He belongs to my father. I can never let him down. I can never let my father down. You may not say anything to the person. But when you are with your father, the way you are battling and fighting, fighting for that brother and that sister, God look at you. Say, yes, I'm right. I pick one. I pick you. I am the one who picked this, my boy, this, is my daughter. That is love. Anybody, every time you say or say, something, repent, 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 repent. As soon as you repent. Repent. Hallelujah. Matthew 25, verse 34 to 36 say, Then the king will say to those on his right hand, or what? No, let me just, I wanted to explain it prophetically, but let's go. Amen? On his right hand, come, you bless you blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you for the foundation, from the foundation of this world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. And when the scripture goes on, says, this righteous one will ask God, when did we do this? Say, whenever you did it for any of my beloved, you did it for me. But what we have forgotten is that God is inside everyone. As God is inside the people and God loves us, whatever the person feels, God feels as well. As God feels as well, when you are doing it for God, for him, God, the joy the person Feelings, God feelings, feel it. Hallelujah. So please love and stop enjoying people. What Jesus says, if you say hello only to those you know, what are you doing extra? Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Then you'll be like your father in heaven. So please, let's forget about this nonsense love. Love is not enjoying. Love is fighting for the father to be happy. Hallelujah. These are the values God look at. Say, no, I want to pick this one. Oh, the way she become now, the way he become now, no, 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 no. I have to protect myself. I have to do this. I have to do that. My friend, that say that you stop enjoying him or you stop enjoying her. And you never love him, you never love her. Hallelujah. You want the father to pick you? Come back into the values of the father. And you'll be what? Okay. What I'm telling you, as he told me that, say, he wants to open the eyes of 21. I say, hey. But what I'm talking to you is not you are there, your see vision, see vision. No, no, no. Your eyes is open permanently. Hallelujah. 
But if you don't understand, if you don't understand how to manage it and how to behave, he may want to do it. I don't know who. He never tell me any name. I know I never tell me any name, but I know he's going to do it. As he said, he never said anything he doesn't do. He's going to do it. But please, start loving. Loving him and loving others. Hallelujah. Your love for God and human being will determine your work in the house and your giving in his house. If you love God and you love human beings, that will be shown in how much you work in his house and how much you give in his house. This is true. Amen? And some people, they pay their tithes because they don't want to lose their job. They are not loving yet. You pay because you value the work of God and you, you want it to, go, to advance. And you are giving joyfully. But if you are giving because you don't want to lose your job, actually it's selfish. Hallelujah. It's selfish. So if anybody among us paying your tithes or giving offering because you don't you want to lose, you want God to protect some of your, your, what you call, your interest, what you do, Father, change my heart. Give me, open my eyes to see the value so I can do it, but I will be doing it for you. Hallelujah. I will be doing it for you then you see God will increase you. Because you know that you don't do it because you want something. You, because of your own sake. You do it because of his sake. Hallelujah. And when challenges come, you always pay your tithes. You always do things in the house of God. But now challenges come. You see your own interest. And if you, you can't do both, you have to do one. I say, Father, the maturity, the spiritual maturity is determined by how much we give up our own interest for the interest of the kingdom or the interest of others. Therefore, take it, me later. God will look at you. Say, okay. He will say, tick, you tick. Angel, go and tick that box. Say, tick, 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 tick. I will tick. And one day, certain doors start being opened. Why me? Why me? And you don't understand. But these are the value. Amen? 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4 to 7 say, Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own. That means it's totally selfless. It is not irritable. When I love my son or I love my daughter, I love anybody. That you see, there are some people when you are in their presence, immediately you are start feeling some irritation. Let me give you the key. Pray. No, immediately God has given you something there. But the devil will want to fight you in that person. So you are fasting for that person. You are praying for that person. Hallelujah. You are fasting. You are praying for that person. I'm telling you, a lot of Christians have not reached this level where you know that actually where is problem is where God wants you to be. Where is problem is where God wants you to be. Faithfulness. Some people think when you come to church regularly because you are living in UK, uh, even when you are not working, the benefit system is working for you. When uh, you want a job, you have a job, everything just okay, okay, okay. But when you lost your job, you start blaming your boss. 
Now you are blaming people, eh? Amen? Let me tell you. Your love for God is proven in your hardship for God. Amen? It's proven in your hardship for God. And faithfulness, the devil is attacking you. Everything going against you. But you never give up. You never give up. That's what we call faithfulness. Because in your heart, what you saw, what you are stick to, is what we call faithfulness. Not what is happening here. Somebody keep on enjoying say he's faithful. Yo! You are not faithful, Lada. Keep on enjoying you say you are faithful. No. That's not faithfulness. Say the faithful one are those who face the army of the enemy, but they stand. Hallelujah. So, your degree of love, growth, is what determine, de, determine your degree of closeness to God. Because God, his love is total. We, ourselves, we say unconditional. Amen? Let's say right now, we have some people who are doing something very wrong. And we say, it's true they are doing something wrong. What they are doing is not godly. But we hate them. Hallelujah? Jesus will look at them, he will smile. Amen? To my experience, eh, I never heard or see Jesus put his face on when he sees somebody who is a sinner doing something very wrong. He puts his face on to somebody who knows a lot, who is even close to him. Jesus doesn't get angry to sinners. He gets angry to the saves. Hallelujah. Let's ask God to change our mentality, the way we sit in. Say, my ways are opposite to your ways. When we can get his, our ways changed into his ways, I'm telling you, he will pick you for great divine missions. Amen? While we are growing in love under our spiritual father, God watches how much attention we bring to ourselves with some little blessing he released into us. You get what I'm saying? When we are growing, you remember Moses. Moses is the one who went to Egypt to get people out. Now they are following Moses. As they start eating some food and things, things start getting better, they want now to get angry at Moses. Some people pay the highest price. That's the what they're supposed to experience in Egypt, they experience in Moses. The ground was open and they were swallowed. Hallelujah. So, what I'm talking about here, I want to talk about pride. Pride. When we have certain grace. Or maybe now you have money. I'm tired. I'm not going to church today. No, I have work all the week. I'm so tired now. Amen? Because, but before when you were not working, you were coming all the time. Uh, tomorrow I have to wake up early to go to work, so I can't come to church tonight. All this, I'll call it them nonsense. If that's the case, let God take the job back. So you can come to church. Hallelujah. And we don't do, look at it that, that way. Maybe I will start praying that way. I will tell you anything. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So as he told me that he's going to open the eyes of 21 people. Brothers and sisters, what I know, if God says something, this is what he does. If you got the teaching and the equipment before the things come, you can keep it. 
But if you don't got the equipment and the teaching, when the things come, you lost it. So it will come, but you lost it. For him to say, for you never to say that, oh, you promised, but you never did, did it. It will come. Even if it once, your eyes will be open at least. And later on, just close. Why? Because you don't have the equipment. Hallelujah. When you sense that rain is about to come, what do you do? You run, you get an umbrella, you run to your house. So anytime you have an information that something is coming, you get prepared for it. Okay? But when it's God, we don't want to get prepared. That means we don't have the heart of the son. Say, this for my father, let me take care of it. Let me get ready. Hallelujah. I want to tell you that part of Jesus was in all the characters. The, I would say the good characters, because in the Bible we have bad characters and good characters as well. Hallelujah. All the part of, part of Jesus was in the good characters of the Bible. So what I want to recommend to us, let's go back to the Bible, study the good characters, study Jesus, not look at what they are doing in, on the front line. But look at what they are doing in the back office. Because it's the results of the back office that is produced in the front line. Hallelujah. So, brothers and sisters, you want, we all want to be picked for great divine mission. Hallelujah. Sometimes there is somebody who is irritating you, or you have something against that person, that's the very person God will come and tell you, go and do this there. Hey, Father. He wants to know if you love him or you love yourself. If you love yourself, you always go, you will always be picky. Hallelujah. Picky. Brothers and sisters, I believe from now you have no more enemies. Or you never thought about it. Amen? You have no more enemies. You have brothers and sisters you have to pray for. You have people you have to fast for. You have people you have to intercede for. Regardless of what they do, Against you. I hope nobody in your phone has been blocked. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me take, give you this testimony. I preached to someone last week on the phone. When I preach love, the person was happy. And the person dropped what he has or she has against somebody else. I said, Hallelujah, Father, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm telling you, three hours later, one brother dropped something to me. I said, Wow, Baba Kaya Sakata. Eh? But I never spoke to it about anybody because I learned something. Anything anybody does. I don't want to be the journalist of the devil. When somebody did something against me, I won't share with you. If I don't like it, I won't share with you. Because I know God never did that things through him to warn me. It's the devil who did it. As the devil did it, I, won't do, I don't want to be his journalist. Propaganda what he's doing. I want to be the journalist of God. Amen? So please, if you are registered, amen, in the devilish BBC, <laughs> get yourself off. Hallelujah? Get yourself off. Then God will look at you and say, yes, this one can be my daughter. This one 
can be what? Amen? So studying Jesus and asking God to make us his imitator is the way to make ourselves qualify for his divine great mission. Hallelujah. Starting Jesus and asking the Father to make us the imitators of Jesus is what will make us imitator, no, qualify for his divine mission. So, I just want to tell you, I just put the primary values and secondary values. The primary value is loyalty and integrity to our, our earthly authority God put over us. The secondary value are faithfulness and love. And when we are talking about love, we are not talking about enjoying somebody or enjoying someone. Hallelujah. He's fighting for the person to become the way the father wants him to become. So actually, let me tell you this. You pick up somebody and you are fighting to the person become good. Leave him for, for somebody to enjoy and go and pick up another one. Then you'll be what? Working for your father. Jesus knew that Israel are going to reject him. Only few are going to accept him. But what he did, he went there. He went where? There. But as soon as somebody is rejecting us or doing something, so no, 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 I should not be here. No, I should not be here. Hallelujah. Amen. So I just want to thank God that God is helping us. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you.